Okay. So um, the question that was uh, put forth for us to discuss this week, or the topic rather, to discuss this week is um, how can we maintain healthy relationships with friends, family, while controlling attachment and managing expectations? Sorry about the tampura. So once again, um, the question is, how can we maintain healthy relationships with friends, family, while controlling attachments and managing expectations? Uh, this is also in context with a Valentine's Day that we just had less than a week ago, right? So keeping that also in mind, uh, we can discuss about it. So today, um, I think we are not planning on having the breakout session after this. So we'll have the discussion rather here. So rather than me first sharing my points, I have a few points that I, I wanted to share, of course. But before that, I'll just open the floor up for any one of you who would want to share. All of us have relationship with so many people, father, mother, siblings, friends. Uh, we may have partners, we may have spouse, we may have, um, you know, people that we work with, study with. So we have a lot of relationships. Anything that you would want to share, how do you maintain healthy relationship? Any examples, anything that could be inspiring for others uh, when they hear it from you. So the floor is open for a few minutes. Let's have, let's hear from you. What do you have to share? Anyone? Sure, I'd also just like to say before, um... You know, people, if you're comfortable coming off mute and sharing, feel free to do that. If you'd like to type in any response you have in the chat for us to read, you can do that as well. Sure. Anyone? Namashivaya Ramanandji. Namashivaya. Uh, I can go first. I think one of the key elements that I noticed at least this year with college was uh, with honesty about when I need to just stay away from all social media, all devices, everything, and just study. I went to tell my parents because they usually call me like, oh, have you come home? Have you eaten anything? Hmm. So I, I answer the call, but then I say, yes, I'm now going to study so I inform them of, okay, I'm now working and to not disturb me at that time. So I think honesty would be one crucial thing to have as a foundation. Honesty. Great point. Anyone else? I can go, Ramanji, no sure. Sure, yeah, definitely. Um, I think... Uh, in the past few years, uh, what I've done personally to avoid conflict per se is trying to put myself in the other person's shoes and then trying to see what perspective they may have and, and figure out why they're acting that way. And I would try calming myself down. If at all things don't go the way I, I expect it to go, uh, let it like whether if it's in the professional setting, if you're working with colleagues, friends, or even I members, even my wife. So I, I feel like doing that has helped me like not get into conflicts very much. Wow, someone's talking like a married man. <laughs> a lot of experience in almost one year now. <laughs> Great point, definitely. Yes, I agree. Anyone else? Uh, Namsha Ramanji. Namshwaya, who's that? Uh, it's me, Arati. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So basically, um, I have been. Um, I I had one relationship which I had difficulty with because, uh, um, I mean, she was kind of rude. But she lost her parents at a very young age. So every time something like that happens, I always think, you know, if I mean, like she she didn't have parents. Right. So mm -hmm. and I used to try to be compassionate and 
just think you know from her side she doesn't know how to behave i mean like she didn't know i mean it's not a problem so i mean that kind of actually helps me in still i have good relationship with her because of um, what i could uh, do with amas grace yeah sure sure to understand their their perspective will always help us yeah yeah anyone else Raj, yeah. Um, the one thing is uh, uh, not trying to change them. Even if you want to change something in them, just tell them and ignore. You don't have to like keep saying the same thing. That although they are whatever they are doing wrong, if you are going with the intention to change. like keep reminding them that kinds of really really irritates them so that is something i learned um accept them and then just tell them and then ignore them uh ignore and like educate and ignore like not bothering them so you do your part in helping them change but then they have to change so you be patient then and letting them change again a yeah. very good point anyone else i think yeah. along that lines i have uh i have one more observation that i uh, that i actually practice in my own life too it's uh basically like most of the disconnect happens when there's a difference in expectation it's like you're expecting something and they're not maybe mm-hmm. meeting the mark so that's when you get angry or frustrated so sure. maybe lowering expectations like like you can prepare for the best but sorry prepare for the worst hope for the best prepare for the worst sort of mentality helps in relationships too it's like as long as you have decent expectations i'm not saying don't expect anything because that's a hard thing to achieve but having lower expectations may help with frustrations like that okay i'm just taking note of these points that you're making so that i can compile it together again a very good point anyone else uh, uh, i just is good is yeah, good who's who's that all right teacher go ahead yeah i'm i'm like yeah I... well sometimes i try I'll, i'll try to think like you know in such a situation what would amma do like i mean that has helped i mean how will amma react definitely helps yes a very good again a very good point uh, how would amma react if he can at least do a little bit of that that yeah. will really help the whole situation help us and the other person involved right it really calms us down a lot if you are angry we just think about amma does and yeah sure sure um i wanted to add something yeah yes please uh so i think it helps to sort of like normalize that conflict is a part of all relationships and that it, it doesn't mean that you know that there's a barrier in the connection or that it's going to cause more friction but seeing that as an opportunity for growth and possibly like a mirror for triggers so if there's a trigger that comes up about a particular interaction with the person seeing that as an opportunity to see like well what does that say about me and how am i showing up in the interaction and just like having some grace and and forgiveness in that recognizing that they're also human and that there's room for growth I made note of that point too. Again, a very good point. Um, I was also just going to add a, a small point that, uh, like, lots, maybe lots of times or sometimes, I'm not sure, but like, there's like kind of a, a conflict or something like that. Like, if you kind of step back and, um, like, you can kind of tie it to almost like kind of a I want 
like a uh, a very kind of kind of just selfish like motive and you can like clearly see that once you like take a deep breath and stand back so kind of be aware of like just you just wanting something just for the sake of wanting it and not really for any you know real reason so yeah so rather than what i want what does the situation need is that a good question we could ask instead right and I also see uh, as part of the question it was asked about attachment, uh, how to control attachment. Um, anyone else who wanted to share something? Uh, any of your points or your experiences? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, who's that? Arati again. Okay, yeah. So regarding attachment, uh, I I asked a question to uh, uh, Amrita Gita and Swamji when I was in Bangalore, and I asked him like, uh, how can we um, not get attached, or you know, how can we be not sad even with attachment? Something like that. I asked, and he said, the uh, the best way you can uh, deal with attachment is either you get attached to everything you get attached to everything so that will actually liberate you that's what he said yeah. okay don't be picky on that don't be uh, yeah, yeah. conditional on that okay yeah. actually again a very a very profound point actually yeah. so i mean talking about attachment definitely um, i feel it's the very basic essential part of creation uh, which is relationship the whole creation itself is created with relationship as integral part of it. Uh, simple example, we, we, when we try to fathom the whole creation, the, the easiest, biggest thing that we can think of is the solar system. Solar system has nine planets or eight planets and a sun um in the center all of them are some way kind of bound with each other else they wouldn't be existing as, as solar system and the whole big bang theory itself was such that the whole big bang happened and all these celestial objects started spreading uh, but they had a pull a gravitational pull uh, um, amongst each other and that's what keeps all this going in a regular fashion uh, so right from the very basic thing, uh, the very, very basic essential part of creation is some way to attract each other, which we refer to as relationship, right? Even in our own life, we think about social network, social network before the actual online social networks came. The network that we create with people, our social network, food chain, uh, you know, one animal eats another, that eats another, that's at eats a plant, that plant feeds on something else, etc. right? Or uh, all kinds of hierarchy that we can think in this world. Family, um, the, the, the ancestral lineage that we would have, workplace, uh, all kinds of, um, you know, the whole organization of our workplace. Uh, think of diplomacy, diplomacy between two people, between two families, between two organizations, between two kingdoms, between two countries, all these are integral part of life or integral part of the world. Relationship um, um, should not be just uh, brushed off thinking it's attachment and let's not have any relationship. So that's probably the very first thing that we need to um, understand and respect and acknowledge. I was reading this article in the American Psychological Association website. They were referring to a few um, uh, publications like the American Jour Journal of Psychiatry, etc., where they were mentioning how uh, people who have, uh, I'm just reading out the, uh, the couple of sentences that I read in, as part of the article. It said, people who have friends and close confidants are more satisfied with their lives and less likely to suffer from depression. So relationship, for, according to them, um, is very important in keeping our, uh, the, 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 uh, the lively feeling 
positive feeling, positive outset um, up in life. Relationships play a very important role. Friends and every kind of confidant that we have, uh, they play an important role. And they also mention uh, they are also less likely to die from all causes, including heart problems and a range of chronic diseases. So they say good having good relationship with people uh, you know, certainly affects even our physical uh, health, uh, including heart uh, issues that we may have or chronic uh, uh, um, you know, uh, health issues that we may have are um, taken care or are at least positively affected by the relationships that we have. So definitely relationship is an essential part. So let's definitely uh, rule out the fact that relationship or uh, is uh, a burden in some way wherein we just need, if you're spiritual, I need to get rid of all of that. You know, people like me, it's a different case wherein we take a vow, wherein um, we become a monk. And when you say you become monk, you sever your relationships, your family, etc. Uh, that doesn't mean I stop considering my father my father. I cannot deny the fact because I came into existence because of my father and my mother. So I cannot just deny the very fact, the very basic fact. It is just that I don't get entangled, I don't get overwhelmed, I don't get kind of um, bound by it. That's all what it means by detachment. And um, you know, I think one way of um, understanding um, good relationship or to implement good relationship would be to look into Valentine's Day, right? Just a week ago, today is what, 20th? So for six days ago was Valentine's Day. And I'm definitely I'm not the best person to talk about Valentine's Day, hopefully not. Uh, I remember having um, a friend who was a girl, so I, can, I could call it girlfriend, um, when I was in my second grade. I specifically remember this incident. Uh, when I was in my second grade, I had one of my classmates in India. You just class your 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 classmate all throughout. You all the classes, all the courses you take the same course. So you classmates forever, literally. So I had this classmate, uh, this girl who lived a couple of buildings away from where I lived. So uh, we were good friends, and I remember there was this exam coming up uh, in a couple of days, and she along with me, another two friends of mine. So three boys and this girl, she gave us this idea, uh, second grade, okay? So she gave us this idea, why don't we study together uh, and we can do the exam well. She's, so she just gave us instructions. There were four or five segments. So she assigned each segment to each one of us telling, you study this part, you study this part, you study this part, and exam, we'll just do it together. So you, you help me with this part, we'll help you. So it's a collaborative exam. And we are so dumb, second graders, uh, so I just fell for it. I was like, why not? We'll definitely do it. And the exam started and we we had no idea that we have to be very, uh, uh, you know, discreet about doing exam together. Yeah. We were just discussing things. And uh, of course, the teacher came up to us and asked, asked us what's happening. And that very moment, this girl just flipped uh, altogether. She was like, Oh, ma'am, these three boys, they're discussing and writing ex uh, writing answers. And we really got a lot of scoldings from the teacher. And she went uh, completely scot-free. Uh, uh, you know, um, you know I, I discreetly remember that whole scene uh, in the classroom. Uh, maybe that's one reason I decided to become a monk and not deal, deal with girls after that. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Not really. But um, I'm not the best person to talk about Valentine's Day, but... I, based on my reading about Valentine's Day, I understand um, Valentine's Day is about Saint Valentine. And Saint Valentine, there are, it seems, many uh, Saint Valentines in, uh, in the history. Um, and there is, there, so there, there are specific things regarding different Saint Valentines. At least two of them are very popular. One of them is from the Roman um, Empire period, from the third, third century. And the Roman Empire... Um, uh, then had a, a a weird rule or rather a ban. The ban was on marriage. Uh, they didn't want their soldiers to get distracted. They wanted them to fight and help them expand. So the king had a decree telling um, none of the men should get married, especially those involved in uh, uh, being soldiers, involved in the army. 
should not get married and think of the, the whole situation no no marriage allowed um, in the whole the whole kingdom and it seems uh, there is this saint valentine who uh, discreetly secretively uh, um, got oh what is this did someone share your screen okay so um, someone's bad uh, so, uh, uh, so uh, he he would discreetly or secretively get people married, help them get together with their uh, loved ones, and he got caught and was put into uh, behind bars. And um, as a matter of fact, they say the king got positively influenced by him. The king was going to relent but the army the head of the army and the people in the the top people in the army were very against it and finally um he died and it seems he was cremated on 14th of february um uh, so that's how 14th of february became important and it was not until two centuries later uh, the then pope declared that day as saint valentine's day and if I understand it right, in the 16th or 17th, 17th century, the, the Catholic Church decided to take it off their list of uh, special days. Uh, so St. Valentine's Day is no more uh, the official uh, part of the Catholic system, but it became so popular that we still do it. So why did I bring Valentine's Day into um, uh, the topic or the discussion is, uh, think of a situation or think of how Say you are in a relationship with someone, how could you make uh, a foolproof plan to make the 14th of February, uh, uh, an upcoming 14th of February, um, most happiest for you and your partner? What would be the best scenario? Anyone, what would you do? Is there everyone just conveniently keeping quiet? <laughs> I mean, I, I could go. I suppose one thing, you know, they say ideally in a, in a healthy relationship, you know, hopefully every day should be like Valentine's Day when you're communicating, you know, love for each other and respect for each other. So with that being said, you know, given that it is a, a thing, then at least some, some gesture or some show on top of what's happening every day. And Anuj clearly is busy with exams. So that's exams are his Valentine. Valentine's Day. But, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, you know, you, you associate gifts with Valentine's Day. So you're definitely planning that. Say, what would be the best scenario? I would say the best scenario would be you plan the biggest gift for your partner. The best gift that you can for your partner. If you plan the biggest gift for your partner, Definitely that's going to be successful, right? It's kind of foolproof successful. But what about your partner's gift to you? It can be, it is beyond our control. We cannot, though we can influence the partner and in kind of giving subtle ideas of what we expect in gift, but there is no uh, assurance the gift that we expect is what we are going to get. So again, going with a foolproof approach, what would be best to do to keep our expectation of the gift as low as possible. So what we give is definitely under our control and if we can keep that as big as possible and what we get is definitely not on, in our control. If we can keep that as small as possible, I feel 14th of February would be the best day for us uh, or the whole plan will be kind of uh, not, not, it will not get derailed um, if, we, if we go with this scenario. And I think that verily is the message uh, of Valentine's Day, how we can keep every day of our life in a relationship uh, well. It's, it's an equation between acceptance and expectation. Acceptance, expectation. Accept, uh, expectation goes up, acceptance goes down, it is going to be hell. Um, expectations go completely down, acceptance goes very high, we can get, you know, Run over, by, run over by someone. Rather, keep both of them balanced. Keep
keep our expectations low enough but at the same time not such that we compromise on our self esteem at the same time uh, our um, uh, our um, the 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 attitude of giving should be as strong so keep acceptance and expectations don't expect too much at the same time don't uh, accept li- uh, small or big keep keep them uh, uh, you know in a balanced way that would be the best way to keep any relationship uh, healthy and that kind of um, includes all the various points that uh, all of you were mentioning uh, you know uh, relationship is not just about what i get relationship we should definitely think about what i can give um, uh, it's it's not that we shouldn't expect anything uh, when you say detach we detach it, it doesn't mean that you don't expect anything just that you need to be realistic about what you expect and be realistic that what you expect may or may not get satisfied so i feel uh, there are at least four points uh, that i thought of and i kind of um, um, included the points that you guys uh, shared uh, before i started speaking one is um, relationship when you say there is nothing called ideal relationship no relationship is going to be smooth be it with our parents be it with our friends be it with our you know girlfriend boyfriend husband uh, wife spouse uh, no relationship is uh, utopian in nature every relationship is going to have its highs and lows so uh, let us be realistic about it so let us be prepared for it that is what is most important um i remember my own parents i feel um if it uh, you know if i really look at it rationally look at it logically i feel both of them shouldn't had been husband and wives because they just don't get along they have their likes dislikes are completely different but they lived together for 50 55 or 56 years um um not that they did not have differences of opinion they had a lot of differences of opinion even you know i would uh, say how my mom was very time sensitive my father was quite the other way around say we got invited to a wedding we we always had this uh, tug of war who should we go with mom or dad because mom will go before the wedding started dad will go after the wedding ended so which extreme should we go to would all, always be our situation so um they were like that but um especially i remember the last 10 years of my mom's life she passed away a couple of years ago she was uh, you know progressively uh, getting into her parkinson's uh, uh, situation and the kind of bond both of them had and you know to have to take care of a person who has parkinson's alzheimer's is not uh, an easy thing it saps you out completely psychologically and physically and um to see uh this old person take care of another old person with so much dedication just no complain uh you know she, he could have very well thought you know back then 20 years ago i wanted things like this and you didn't let me do it like that serves you be- uh, serves you right uh, you 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 deal with your parkinsons that was not his attitude his attitude was hi how can i do my best to make things best for you or even better for you so um i feel that understanding is very important uh differences of opinion uh, will definitely happen no relationship is going to be uh, ideal so that's one two how to handle it when things just don't go right two is communication communication is very important uh, we need to be open we need to be honest uh, i think kishore brought in the topic of being honest uh, just be open and honest if we really want to be uh in relationship with someone what would be the relationship even best friends bffs uh girlfriend boyfriend what would be it uh, if we want to have uh, sorry anuj mentioned it was honest sorry honesty about honesty um uh if um we we want to have long term meaningful relationship we need we need to be open and honest and uh when you say have good communication uh it's not about just me communicating to the other person we also need to be good listeners because they have a lot of things to say too we need to be open to that uh and 
sometimes not communicating is good communication too we should be aware of that too it doesn't mean that we have to communicate all the time sometimes just keeping quiet helps the situation quite well so three things when you say about communication one be open and honest two uh, not just it's not just from you to the other person be a good listener from the other person to you and three sometimes just don't communicate that is probably the best required communication at that point so that's the second point with communication the third one i feel is the aspect of respect uh, the other person will have a lot of strengths and a lot of shortcomings respect both of them we'll naturally respects their strength we should also respect their shortcomings because their shortcomings is what defines them uh, so respect that when you say respect that it's basically accept them with their shortcomings like i think this was kishore telling uh, oh no sorry raj uh, mentioned we can definitely help them change or get better but let us respect their shortcomings sometimes they may not be able to get better uh, in the pace that we want them to get better probably they may not get better at all but um, respect them for that or accept them the way they are i'm always gives us example right uh, expect a frog to behave like a frog expect an elephant to behave like an elephant don't expect the elephant to behave like a frog don't expect the frog to behave like an elephant uh, again a fun fact it seems the elephant cannot behave like the frog even if it wants to elephant is the only animal that cannot jump it seems uh, i read somewhere recently so um, i didn't know actually it was quite quite an interesting fact most of the other animals uh, can jump Uh, but for elephant so um respect is the um um one important thing so respecting their strengths and shortcomings to also respect their perspectives because they may think differently from us so it's not just about what i think what i think is right my way or highway let us respect their perspectives too and finally the fourth point let us um any relationship would be healthy and strong only when there is a support system in the relationship we support them uh, you know to 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 be of mental support to be of practical help and uh, when we support them automatically they'll support us it's like you know um, civil engineering who is civil engineer engineer anuj here are you civil engineer uh, mechanical a mechanical um, more or less the same I think uh, uh, either one of Kishko or Nico are into, is into civil. I think Nico is into civil engineering too, right? Uh, it's it's a very basic principle. When you support two uh, two things against each other, automatically when when you make one thing support the other, the other automatically supports this thing too, right? Uh, there's some law. I don't exactly remember. I remember reading about it some time back. So when when in any design. Uh, when we make one thing support the other uh, it is by nature that the other will start supporting this that's how a complete design is similarly you we be of in emotional support or be of practical help to the other person automatically the other person will be of support to us too uh, we don't need to expect it it will automatically happen so the best way to get someone else to support you is to you uh, is by you supporting them so i feel the fourth point is support um so first one be practical and be aware and acknowledge that differences of opinion will uh have uh, will be there uh, no relationship is going to be ideal two communication is very important and as part of communication be open be honest be a good listener and three uh when required just don't communicate that's probably effective communication then the third one it's about respecting respecting and accepting people with their strengths and their shortcoming and respect their perspectives their likes and dislikes and fourth be of support to the other person and when we are of support to the we are of support to the other person the automatically the other person would be of support to us so i just thought i'll share these points and this this applies in everything every kind of relationship even with parents even with our siblings our family members friends uh, partners in life 
spouse, uh, girlfriend, boyfriend, etc. So, um, anything that anyone would want to add in addition to this? Ritu is asking something. What is it? How do you know what is an elephant versus frog? I mean, elephant is black, has a long trunk. Frog is much smaller, has big eyes, considering its body size. I didn't understand your question. An elephant is elephant. Are you, I mean, I didn't understand your question. Are you trying to imply what? something? No, like, it's just so abstract to me. This quote, like, I'm almost like, an elephant is an elephant, a frog don't make one out there. But like, how do you know? what's an elephant and what's a frog uh you know i mean let let go of elephant and frog let's just consider ritu and kaiva kaiva will be kaiva ritu will be ritu kaiva the moment he sees a surface in front of him he will start playing tabla on it whether you like it or not he will do that that's kaiva and ritu uh I don't know, what do you do, typically do? Ritu will be someone who, uh, you know, will st strike a conversation with someone new she sees. That is how Ritu is. Uh, so you better accept them the way they are. Uh, you acknowledge what Kaiva would be. If the surface comes in front of him, he will start playing tabla. If, even if it is a dashboard of a car or a table in front of him, sometimes someone's head in front of him, he will start playing tabla on that. Uh, uh, you better acknowledge that, accept that. That way it'll be so much easier to deal with Kaiva. The moment you start denying that Kaiva shouldn't do it and Kaiva hasn't gotten out of that habit, we are going to feel unsettled. So when Amma says elephant and frog is just, just uh, an example, you, you call it what, simile? It's just an example. It's like any two, two things, uh, two people, two items. Uh, they are what they are and they have their likes, dislikes, they have their shortcomings and strengths. Accept them the way they are. They will behave the way they can, only the way they can behave. What if the other individual does not reciprocate the respect that we show and we are taken advantage of? So um, like I mentioned, uh, we should definitely, the acceptance, expectation, uh, balance, uh, expectations, uh, sorry, acceptance should not go so high that we compromise on our um, on our self-esteem. But at the same time, uh, let us be practical about it. It's like how Amma says uh, in the example Amma gives. You just go and tell a person, you know, can you love me tomorrow at 10 a.m.? Or even tell the person, can you get angry at me tomorrow at 10 a.m.? That's not going to happen, right? Um, uh, these things get triggered by the situation that we are in, sometimes conducive, sometimes otherwise. So um, um, the best, when they don't reciprocate to what uh, we uh, expect of them, or at least to some, ex some extent what is expected of them or what is right at that moment, it's their shortcoming. So I feel the best way to deal with it is to look at it as, as their shortcoming and forgive them. But you don't have to stand there, you know, uh, every blow that they deal with, don't be on the receiving end to get every blow that, uh, they, they, that comes towards you. You can definitely, uh, you know, get away from that situation. But at the same time, my reacting to that given situation, is it going to help in any way possible? It's like telling them, get angry at me or love me. It's not going to happen. The love or the anger has to naturally come from them. So um, I feel the best way is to just avoid that situation. Again, Amma always says, don't hate a person. You can always hate a bad quality that may they may have and avoid it. But doesn't mean that we need to hate that person. It's like... Um, um, you know, how Amma used to guide me. Some of my, I've, I think I've spoken about this uh, in one of the earlier Ayud Reflex sessions when um, I had to stay with some of my classmates during my college time. They drank, uh, they had some habits which I was not 
uh, I wouldn't subscribe to um, typically. But I was because of the internship, I had to stay with them. Um, so, um, you know, I cannot, you know, start professing Gita and telling them this is what Lord Krishna says in Gita. In that situation, that's not going to work. Uh, but at the same time, uh, Amma, would, Amma would tell me, don't hate them because they have a lot of nice things. They were very helpful. They were very understanding. They would always support you whenever you need, you had some need. Just hate the action that they do when they drink. Just avoid them. That moment, just they are not your friends anymore. But the moment they are done with that, again, when they are back to doing good things, they're good friends of yours, which you should, uh, who you should utilize, whose company you should utilize. So it, you don't need to hate them, rather avoid the actions that they do, which is not right. So, so when you see that they're taking due advantage, undue advantage of you, I feel that's, uh, that's the, um, I mean, just avoid that situation. Just get away from them and definitely forgive them for that. Keeping vengeance in you is not going to hurt, uh, help you or them. It's like two, two sided knife. It's going to hurt you and hurt them too. I hope that made sense. Should one learn to be honest first or learn to listen? I feel uh, to be honest and to listen, they just go hand in hand. You try to be honest, automatically you will be open to listening. Or you are open to open you're open to listening, you have to be honest to some extent so that you will be courageous enough to listen to the other person. I think they go hand in hand. Try one, the other would automatically uh, come along. Bianca says, I know relationships are reciprocal give and take, but when we do, uh, when do we draw the line in relationship when we are over functioning to sustain relationship? I feel, uh, you know, many of these are very specific. Uh, there is, it will be too, I'll, I think I'll be wrong in kind of generalizing the, say, the thing, saying just forgive, forget. Some situations when things are not dharmic, not righteous, we do have to take stands against it. We do have to, uh, you know, be firm and do something about it. So there's definitely no uh, disagreeing with that point. Uh, I feel uh, to generalize the point, let's keep the idea of, expectation acceptance don't let your acceptance unnecessarily go up that whatever comes towards me i'll just accept it if we see that it is wrong adharmic in nature definitely uh, the first thing would be to just avoid that situation uh, you know keep may start maintaining distance um, uh, you know then you know we have discussed about samadana bheda danda first forgive then try to uh, make them understand. The third one is to then warn them. The fourth one is then to actually reciprocate and react uh, to the given situation. Then probably we should take those four steps and respond to the person. Um, sometimes it is required to be stern, uh, but make sure it's not, we just, we are not just reactive and we are doing, it doesn't come out of, you know, the spur of the moment that we react. We should be, uh, we should be. We should have exhausted all the other things. First, we uh, uh, forgive, reconciliation, um, warning, and then react. We should have done the all the other three things, then react. I hope that answers that question. Okay, Piyanka says thank you for answering. Okay. Uh, um, Swamiji, sorry, yeah. can I ask a quick question? This is Sharada from yes, Um So. You know, we were talking about acceptance, right? So I had a question uh, related to that. When you want to help someone who does not want to be helped, for example, uh, letting go of it seems to be the way to go. Um, but how do you know when to stop? Like, I find that is the hardest um, in terms of, you know, like, uh, do you just give up completely uh, or do you take breaks and you try again? Because I feel this kind of self-doubt keeps coming back and it, you know, maybe you start thinking you didn't try properly. You didn't try hard enough. You didn't, you weren't patient enough with this person. Um, so when those kinds of, you know, self-doubt creeps in, like, how do you know at what point you transition from, 
trying to help to acceptance or like respecting their shortcoming or something that's my uh, question you know uh, uh, a very good question again uh, it would be very difficult to have a generalized answer for this because every situation every relationship has its own you know flavor its own um, specifics that we need to take into consideration before we actually give up we start uh, you know distancing ourselves etc so i feel one question definitely that can be generalized is uh, whatever we are trying to do either to help them uh, the question we need to ask is is it really helping them you know uh, it's it's uh, for example say someone is um, hungry someone is hungry and we it is very evident that there is something wrong with them they have some kind of a need which he or she is unable to uh, you know satisfy and we start giving them ice and the person uh, say the person is not able to express to you uh, what he or she wants uh, you give the person ice the person may first accept it and maybe because of the real big hunger that they have uh, the person may eat it but the person is definitely not the hunger is not going to be uh you know taken care of with the eyes that we give the person still seems uh kind of famished uh, and we try to give more and more eyes and uh what we are doing is definitely help we are really trying to uh give eyes to that person but that's not what the person needs probably the person needs what the person needs is milk or some food that will really help the person uh but uh as we see that what we are doing is not helping them the best we should do is now uh, retract rather than giving more and more eyes it's not going to help them it's only going to be, make the situation bad uh, for us and for the person so i feel uh, that moment we should try to uh, retract and when you say retract uh, let's not abruptly stop it rather reduce the frequency and see so rather than telling every 5 minutes have eyes have eyes now try to make it 15 minutes make it half an hour and you see the same expression in the person uh, it just gives you some confirmation because it was definitely not uh, a spur of the moment rea- uh, reaction that the person is giving they are doing the same over a longer period of time definitely it's a genuine situation wherein you are unable to understand what is the help they need sometimes the help they need is no help like i mentioned sometimes not communicating will be good communication similarly sometimes not helping will be good help to them at that situation so probably reduce the frequency and then probably stop uh, helping them at that moment with that given situation doesn't again like amma says don't start hating the person for that we are all we are trying to do is get away from that situation not getting away from the person that moment probably the person doesn't need the help that we are giving him probably later they will be hungry or sorry they would be thirsty then we go back with the eyes it will help them some other day so don't completely cut off the relationship that moment they don't need it sure i'll i'll step back that doesn't mean i'm just going to completely cut myself off from you i feel i mean that's the only generalized thing that i can talk about as of now uh, if we discuss specifics of a specific relationship with respect to which you are asking this question we can definitely get into that uh, offline probably does that that was helpful sense? yeah yeah that was really helpful thank you thank you thank you i see it's already 10:14 so um yeah i see param's uh, expressions are changing slowly on his face uh, so let's make yeah. a relationship i'll stop here <laughs> no this is great clearly it's uh you know a topic that resonated well with everyone uh, i think we got a lot of engagement today and again if anyone has any more questions feel free at the very end of the session we're going to have a link where you can submit your feedback and also future questions for more reflex sessions so if you have a question based on this and your feedback you can include this question and kaiva and i will pass it on to ramana ji to get in touch with you offline as well so uh that will be open to everyone i think uh, we can move on to the budgets part of the session now ramana ji if that's okay Sure, sure.